Anybody know why we're here tonight? Let me ask a different question. I, I would assume as some of us know, but does anybody know what topic it is tonight? Something about winning. Something about winning? That was the last one. Building a champion's mindset. Pressure. I thought there was no better resemblance of pressure than oranges and diamonds. Because if you think about it, if you squeeze an orange, if you put pressure on it, what do you get? Orange juice. Yeah, think about how diamonds are created. They're not just created and they get picked from a tree or picked out of a cave, do they? No. They have to go through a ton of pressure and a lot of time to get to what we know as a beautiful diamond, whether it's in a necklace form, a ring form, whatever the case may be. Maybe some of you can relate to this analogy or this, this challenge of tryouts and pressure. That, that pressure of, if I'm on the second team right now, there's a lot of pressure, maybe, for me to make that first team. Or if I'm already on that first team, how do I keep my spot so the kid that's been working their butt off on the second team doesn't take my spot on the first team? That's some pressure. Maybe some of you can relate to that. I know I was there as a player, played for this club, and I can think of, uh, of situations like that at tryouts where I was so worried about making the team that the day of tryouts, I wasn't even thinking about that opportunity that was right there in front of me. Maybe some of you can relate to that idea and pressure. Right? Point being, don't get in your own way. I think so, so often players will get so caught up in saying, what about what's going to happen next that they forget about right now? So thinking about pressure, I wanted to pose this question. What do we get when you're under pressure? Do we get something sweet of that orange juice? Something great of an example like a diamond? Or when we're under pressure, do we get someone that just storms up, like, forget it, I'm quitting. Right? Different ways to deal with pressure. So I just want to take about the next 30 minutes-ish to talk about what are ways, and not just ideas, but actual things that you kids can do, whether you're 11, whether you're 13, whether you're a boy, whether you're a girl. You don't have to wait another four years to implement some of this stuff. But you talk about pressure. This guy's dealt with a little bit of pressure in the last few years. Yeah, done a pretty good job, I, I, would, I would venture to say, overall as well, dealing with that pressure. How old is he? 32? No, he's 22. He's like 22. Yeah, a lot of pressure with that specific player. So let's dig into performing under pressure. What is pressure? What is pressure? If you look at the definition of it, it means to press, right? What are things that press you on a day-to-day? -day? Maybe it's in soccer, maybe it's in school, maybe it's within your family. What are some things that press you boys and girls out of curiosity? What is pressure to you? For some, it might be, how am I gonna fit in with my within my friend group because I'm going to a new school this year. That's pressure, right? Some of you, it's my parents expect me to get straight A's. That's a lot of pressure. For some of you, it's not even the parents part. It's, oof, I got, I got really bad grades last year. I have a lot of pressure to get good grades this year. Any other pressure moments that some of you have felt that you're willing to share? Maybe some of you, it's just showing up on time. That's pressure. Maybe some of us, it's, it's accountability. It's, it's saying, hey, did you do that when you said you were going to do it by? Sometimes that's pressure for people. And some people are like, yeah, I did it. I got it done. No problem. Is it chores? Sometimes chores are pressure. For the adults out there, pressure might be, how many of you out of curiosity have two, three, four siblings at home or more? Maybe that's pressure to your mom and dad. How am I going to make all of my kids happy having so many kids, knowing I have to get places? That's pressure right? You think about the money piece. That's pressure to perform to make sure, hey, let, let's, let's have as good a life as possible. Different ways we all see pressure. So this, this opportunity is not to discount to say, well, I don't know why you look at that as pressure, but she doesn't. I'm not saying that. I think it's just an interesting reality that all of us deal with our own pressure, our own way. Maybe you can relate to some of these. Meeting the goals you set for yourself. Is that pressure for you? dealing with friends and family, expected to do my best all the time, getting the grades I want, making the right decisions. Those are pressure, pressure moments. And again, we're going to dig into these next 30-ish minutes to talk about how can we perform under those pressure moments. Let me ask you this. Is pressure something inside of you or outside of you? Is it inside? Both. Both? How is it both? Okay. And there's pressuring things outside that 
Like what? What's pressuring outside? Homework, school. So other, okay, balancing other pieces. Yeah, so it's, she said both inside and outside of us. Did we have another hand up? Other people's expectations creates pressure on you. Yeah. So it probably is a little bit of a mixture of both. It's something to be mindful of as we keep this discussion going. Where does this pressure come from? Do we need pressure? It makes, it makes us uncomfortable. We don't probably say, yeah, I enjoy pressure. So do we even need it in life? What's the, what would be the purpose? You say yes, but you just gave an example of pressure about teachers. Or was that someone else? Okay, but you said yes, we need pressure? We need pressure because without it, we won't accomplish anything. Yeah, you wouldn't accomplish, how would you know what's good is good and what's bad is bad? Yeah, or what's, what's not good enough? There's some kind of sense of accomplishment to say, I know what my best looks like. Yeah, any other thoughts? Is it needed? Is it really needed? If it makes us feel uncomfortable, makes us feel those butterflies. So it makes you prioritize. Mm -hmm. Maybe some things to say this is more important than other things. And that pressure helps us make those decisions. Great insight. Love that. How do you feel less pressure? Let's dig into this one. Here's one way. Routines. What is a routine? You might have heard of that word. What is that? You should create routines. Yep. Okay. Do you have to do it every day at the same time? No. What? Regularly, yeah. What would be an example? Anybody have any routines out of curiosity? Something that you do on a daily or weekly or every other day? Could be soccer, could be school, could be other things. Yeah. So first I have like what I do at home, like if I get up, I drink water, stuff like that. Then I have school stuff. That okay. Sometimes I drink school stuff and then I have at home a soccer practice. So was that a morning thing or was that kind of throughout your day? You make sure. Certain sections. Certain sections you have routines? Anybody else have any other routines? Yeah? Brushing my teeth um, in the morning and at night. Brushing teeth morning and night? Waking up. Huh? Morning. Just waking up? Is there a time that comes with that wake up? Like six or seven. Six is your routine? Maybe seven at the latest? Yeah, maybe it's what you eat for breakfast. Maybe it's that workout piece to say, hey, at 3 p.m. or 4.30 p.m., I'm getting my workout in for 30 minutes. Yeah, maybe it's reading. Maybe it's the homework piece, but creating routines is a good way to feel less pressure because then anybody ever play in a final in a championship game or something that your team was, that's a lot of hands that just went up. You can put your hands down, but think about sometimes in those moments, we think, oh shoot, what do, what, what do I have to do today? It needs to be a little bit special because it's a final. It's a little, a little bit more pressure added to the situation. If you have routines, it helps you navigate that. So, you know what? It's, it's another game. Yes, it's a final, but I have my routine. I eat the same thing. I do, the, do things a certain way. Maybe it's your pregame, going into games. Do you always stretch the same way? I know for me as a player, I would always stretch my left side to my right. I don't know, it's just a routine. It's kind of funny, it's weird. But that was my routine. It was always left had to come first because I'm a left-footed player. Uh, when I put my shin guards on, it was always my left before my right. If I was stretching quads, it, it was all. So those are little nuances that, that, that's just yours, right? And that's just yours. But I think they're important to have because when you go into those finals, like I said, a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves saying, what do I have to do different? What do I have to do extra? But if you have routines being good habits, you just keep doing it, right? That's one way to feel less pressure in those moments. The mind leads, the body follows. Anybody here of Kobe Bryant? Yeah. Did you know Kobe Bryant? Let me ask you a different question. Hands down. The Halloween theme song. Do -do 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 did you know that was his pregame song before he would go out and play basketball games? Like kind of creepy to a degree, right? But he said that just helped him get in the moment, get him in the mindset to say, I'm, I'm after me and myself, and not from a selfish standpoint, but to say, I need to focus on what I can control. And to help me get there, I'm gonna listen to the same song. There's another routine for you. Do you listen to the same type of music or always a mix and match? No rights or wrongs but just different ideas to say, what routines can I create? And that was his routine. I thought that was an interesting one because for him, and this goes for all of us, what we think, right? Then our body's gonna follow that. The way I think affects the way I feel. 
The way I feel affects the way I perform. Let me say that again. The way I think affects the way I feel. If I think negative thoughts, I'm probably feeling a little down. And if I'm feeling a little down, I'm probably not going to perform that well. Right? And if my thoughts are in, in a much different place, right, that's going to make me feel a little bit different. If I'm feeling a little bit different and I'm feeling looking forward to something, now your performance is that much more likely to be that much better. The mind leads, the body follows. How to feel less pressure. Some other ideas. Control your breathing. Control your body. Who am I impersonating? Can I borrow your ball real quick? Who am I impersonating here? Anybody know that player? That same routine. Who is that? Huh? A little bit louder because I think you're right. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. Same exact. Sets the ball. Puts it exactly how he wants. It's one, two, three. Step to the side. But I want to point out the breathing part because every single time the guy takes a free kick, letting things go. Right? I can, I can think of a lot of youth players I've seen. They'll just put the ball out. They'll kind of go this way. And now, probably not going to be duplicated, nor would I want to duplicate that. But create routines for yourself. Control your breathing. Right? Control your body. Why? Because that's going to affect the way you perform. Can you create those routines? But breathing is a very important one because think about the times you get upset on the soccer field. Someone's nudging you, pushing you, being very, very annoying, right? There's one reaction that you could do, just like, stop, and put him back, right? I would suggest from a breathing standpoint, take that deep breath. As annoying as that person is, don't give her or him the time of day and you move on, right? Easier said than done, I understand that, but understand you always have the choice of how you react to something. I think a lot of players say, well, she made me do it. He made me do it. They were annoying me. You didn't have to choose to react that way. You can choose to control that breathing first because that's going to have a knock-on effect to what you choose to do after. Control the breathing. Slow things down. Take that deep breath. Give you another situation that, that happens a lot in uh, soccer. Penalty shootouts. More and more players will have that routine. They, they have the same. Maybe it's one step. Maybe it's seven steps. But so often you'll see those players control their breathing in that moment. That's a lot of pressure, right? Trying to kick, kick a 12-yard kick in front of 80,000 people, right? But they control that breathing part. Why? Because it lets things go, right? Puts you in the moment. Prep. Different ways to prep. But let's talk specifically about using this one or in school you studying and putting, putting in the time to prep. That's a massive one to what? to feel less pressure. Doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect, doesn't mean you're gonna ace the test, doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect in, in the game this upcoming weekend, but preparation is gonna put you in a place to say, I've been there, done that, because I've pre prepared myself for that. Another one that we'll dig into here in just a little bit, visualization. What is visualization? I talked about it a couple sessions ago. If you visualize something, yeah? Seeing yourself succeeding. Seeing yourself succeeding, okay. And how, where? Where are you seeing yourself on video? Um, no, like just imagine that you can succeed. From an imagining standpoint, what do I need to do in this game that I'm playing this weekend and imagining yourself there? We just had a Halloween a couple, couple uh, weeks ago. Anybody see any scary movies around Halloween? Yeah. Anybody see a scary movie, maybe away from home or at a friend's house, you're going back to your house, you're just like, I'm not going to my bedroom by myself or I'm not going in my house by myself. Anybody been there? Your mind plays tricks on you, right? It cannot decipher what's real from what's fake. So from a visualization standpoint, if you can see yourself performing very, very well here, it's going to have a knock-on effect because your brain, like I said, cannot distinguish fact from fiction. All it knows is that it's thought about that, right? So just like freaking yourself out is kind of a, not a negative thing, but it's a scary thing. Flip it to the other side. How can I use that to my benefit? How can I use the visualization Something that hasn't happened yet, but train my brain to show I've been there. I've done that. Preparation is a massive one to feel less pressure. Think about the times you did not study for that test and how much pressure you probably felt. You're just like, oh my God, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing on this thing. I'm totally winging this. Versus the times you have put the time and effort into it, probably a different place. Reminder, some is better than none. Done is better than perfect. Read that again. Some is better than none. 
done is better than perfect. A lot of kids will just stop because they don't see a result in a week, in a couple weeks. I know I shared this at the last, the last session we had, Usain Bolt, right? The guy ran for nine seconds and trained four years, right? Start, start today and be okay with those small little wins, just inching forward. Some is better than none, done is better than perfect. Start small, follow through and build off of that. That's the little secret that the best have figured out. So they get just a little better, just a little better each day. You look back on your year and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're saying, Phew, I'm a different player. You know what a lot of players choose to do? I'll start, I'll start tomorrow. You know what tomorrow comes? I'll start that tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, I'll start tomorrow. And you haven't started yet. And now we're one month deep and you haven't done anything. Start with those small wins. Start with that five or 10 minutes. How to relax when I can't relax. Don't think about how to calm down or relax. Read that again, because that, that, that one gets me. When I can't relax, don't think about how to calm down or relax. Well, then what are you supposed to think about? Think about how to get excited. Ever get nervous, feel that pressure a little bit? And you're just like, oh my God, I just need to calm down. I got this, come on, I, I, I can do this, I can do this. St what, what should I do to calm down? Maybe it is breathing, but maybe think about the things that get you excited. Instead of just being in that moment, freaking out about how am I going to calm down in this moment, what are the things that you're looking forward to do in that final that we don't get to play those finals every single weekend? Those come only when your team and you earn it, right? Those are few and far between. So how do you feel less pressure? Be mindful of how do I get excited about something versus I know I just need to chill. I got this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What am I excited about? I'm excited about helping my team perform because I play center midfield and winning, winning my 50-50 duels, my 1v1 duels. I get excited about winning all the punts that the goalkeeper plays. I get excited about setting up my teammates, whether it's in wide areas or through the middle. I get excited about that and get your mind in that space. Those are certain ways that, again, you don't have to be 17 to start this. You can do that. You can start doing this if you choose at 11, at 12, at 13. Be intentional. Power thoughts. Power thoughts are important because we said it earlier, the mind leads and the body follows. Here are some examples of power thoughts that I would suggest each and every one of you, not necessarily copy this list, but think of your own power thoughts that apply to you and your spaces. I'm good at this. I'm very capable. I'm quick and strong to act. I deserve to express all my ability. I can handle it. I would then suggest get four or five points of why I'm very capable. What are some things to reinforce that power thought? or that statement. I'm very capable because each, each week I train three times on my weak foot for 20 minutes. Each week I put in a little bit of extra time with a teammate. Each week I have a routine to have the same breakfast every single day and all of a sudden you start reiterating what you do well and now it re-emphasizes that. That's going to put you in a different place to perform when you're under pressure. You're starting to think about the things that say, why am I capable versus questioning yourself, am I capable? And again, these are little techniques that you can apply right now if you want to apply them right now. Change halves into gets. Oh my God, I have to score this goal. My teammate just played me through. I have to score, I have to score. Versus my teammate played me through. I get to help my team win. I get to help create a scoring opportunity for my team. Oh, I have to play this girl 1v1. Oh my God. No, I get to play this girl 1v1. Even if she got around you last time, that was last time. That's not this time. Reset that. And turn your halves, oh, I have to do that again. No, it's I get to do that again. You missed your last penalty kick and you get to step up to it again. Oh, I have to take this. Oh, my God. No, it's I get to take this. I love being in these situations and I'm capable to do it. These are the thoughts that should be here. I'm not saying you're saying this out loud all the time at training or in games. But change your halves into gets. And remember, you create your reality. Going back to those Halloween movies that we get creeped out about. You're the boss and you get more of what you think about. I asked a couple of sessions ago, how many of us think this world is a nice place? And if you think that, you'll find more examples of that. For those of you that think this world is not a nice place, it's a very mean place. You're gonna find more proof that it's a mean place because you're more, that's the way you think. So your brain's looking for those reinforcements based on what you believe. Why it's not smart to run from pressure. But again, it makes me uncomfortable. It, I don't like the feeling of pressure. So why is it not smart to run from pressure? I'll give you three reasons. Number one, doing 
doing hard things, there's a sense of accomplishment. We mentioned that in the very beginning. Why not to run from pressure? Because it's like, I earned that. Think if things were easy all the time, you're like, hey, I did that, not a big deal. But now all of a sudden you've got places that you haven't been yet, there's a sense of accomplishment and you had to overcome something, right? It's human to feel it. I think a lot of players will run from pressure because I don't like this feeling, but guess what? Everybody else deals with it, right? Stop waiting for the easy train, start dealing with hard better. A lot of players will just wait till it gets easier. Be mindful things don't get easier and don't wait for them to get easier, otherwise you're gonna be waiting a heck of a long time. Deal with hard better. Last but not least, that's how you create self-belief in yourself. It's not just a definition in a dictionary. How do you create it? You have to overcome something. You have to overcome that pressure situation. I did it, and I know I can do it again. You have experience to draw from. How do you build confidence? How do you overcome adversity? You need that setback in front of you to see how bad you want something. Setbacks are not made to make you stop. They're made to see how bad you want it. That pressure is not there to make you stop. It's to see how bad are you willing to work for it. Don't run from, the, from those pressure situations. So how do you manage it? We talked about how to feel less of it. So how do we manage the pressure when it's here? I gotta deal with it. Or I have to deal with it after the fact because I didn't get the grades I wanted. Or I didn't score the amount of goals I hoped I, I, I would score. Understand who creates the pressure. That's the how. Who creates it? Yourself. Yes, it might be other people's expectations that play into it, but it's up to you whether or not you care enough to say, you know what, I, that's okay that he or she has this expectation, but I have my own goals that I'm trying to accomplish. And that should dictate where you go with things. Understand who creates it, ultimately it comes down to you. And I say that because once you take responsibility for creating the pressure, now you can take responsibility for changing it and go in the direction you wanna go. Be in the moment. How do you manage pressure? Be in the moment. So many kids will be caught up and they made a mistake, they totally whiffed, it was so embarrassing, it went out of bounds, and they're just like, oh my God, and the game's going and, and get, getting played, right? Or I just got beat 1v1, and instead of recovering, I'm just like, oh my God, that was so embarrassing, that was so bad, I can't believe that just happened. Game's still going on, right? Be in the moment. Or kids will fast forward, think of the final. You've, if I had to guess, you probably played less than four or five of those, right? And they'll fast forward before the game's even started. Oh my God, I hope we win today. I, ho I hope I play well. Now you're thinking about the future versus your preparation for the game in that specific moment in time. Focus on in, focusing on your first touch, focusing on the communication pieces, focusing on those controllables that you have control over versus being worried about the pressure that just happened or that may happen, right? Be in the moment. How to manage pressure. Ever heard of that one? Pressure is a privilege. We need some of it, but we don't need it to, we don't need it to define us. Right? We need pressure to have a sense of accomplishment and say, yeah, I did that. But for those of you that joined us here a couple months ago, I said, be careful about turning your verbs into nouns. Your verbs of, I just got beat, so I'm a failure. My team lost, so I'm a failure. Be careful of that one because a lot of kids will go down that, go down that slope. That's not a, a right one, but that's what you believe if you tell yourself that. Right? Just because I messed up, that's a learning opportunity to, to move forward off of that, off that situation. You need pressure, but don't let it define you, right? We talked about visualization a little bit. How do I manage pressure? Visualize yourself in those moments. I'm talking about what I would do sometimes as a player. And, and this, I really got to expose to visualization in some high school, but we really concentrated in college. It, it would be before I would even go to the game field, I would just be in my dorm room and I would just close my eyes and visualize myself. I played outside back in college uh, for, for one season. And I would, I would visualize myself in those moments and be specific on the field. Be specific on the field. So if I'm an outside back, picture yourself in those parts of the field as an outside back. I also played center mid. So visualize yourself playing in central areas and performing certain acts because we said your brain can or cannot distinguish the difference between reality and fiction. Cannot. It just knows what it thinks. And whatever's going on here, that's what it's going to believe. Right? Use visual visualization as a tool to help you versus help tear you down. Mental toughness is about controlling the switch in your mind. It's not about acting out whenever you're upset and losing your cool. Mental toughness is not getting back at the kid and shoving him, saying, what, what? That's mental weakness. Control your emotions, don't let your emotions control you. 
make sure from a mental toughness standpoint, you can control yourself in the moment. How? <sighs> Easier said than done, but you can control your response. Take that deep breath. Anybody, sometimes be mindful of, do you clench up? Do your shoulders get here when you get super upset? Relax. Let those moments go. Let them pass. Yeah. Be mindful of that mental toughness part and don't kid yourself to think I'm being tough mentally by retaliating. In summary, understand who creates the pressure. Power thoughts your mind leads, your body follows. Breathing, just talked about it, routines. Anybody else think of other routines maybe that's popped up since we've discussed a few? Did you have one in the back? Did you have one? You forgot it? Fair enough. Maybe it's studying routines. Maybe it's exercising routines. Uh, it doesn't have to pertain to soccer when it comes to having routines for what you do and how you do it. Preparation, talk about that. It could be preparation with the ball and training. It can also be preparation for, for school. It could be preparation visualization wise. You're prepping your mind to be able to perform. Your mind starts it, your body will follow that. Don't think about how to relax, think about what? How do I get excited about the moment? How do I get excited about what it is that I like to do for my team? Focus on those pieces when you start feeling that, those pressure moments. And then we'll conclude th with this because it's how we started our discussion today. What do we get when you're under pressure? Hopefully after this conversation, you get a little bit better, right? Because I had mentioned that's what the best do. They get just a tiny bit better. And now over time, they get a lot better. Anybody join out of curiosity? All, uh, what is this, our fourth session? Started in April. Anybody join all four? Yeah? And think about those, those layers now that you've built, right? And I'm not, there's nothing against those of you that have, only, that have only had the opportunity to come to one or two or three, but you've been exposed to four, right? Can you make it five? Can you make it six? Can you make it seven? If, you're, if this is your first one, can you make it two? Can you make it three? Because what I know for a fact as a coach, you have four pillars of you as a soccer player. This, this goes for you regardless of what level and team you play for and how old you are, does not matter. There's your technical ability. How good am I with the ball? There's your tactical ability. What kind of decisions do I make on the soccer field? There's your physical ability. Can I play for 60 minutes, 70 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever age group I play for, right? And then you got your mental ability. It's easy to get a coach and work on the soccer ball and get a little bit better each day, right? Or do it by yourself. It's easy to go on those runs by yourself right? And, and get in shape. I'm not going to say easy. That's a little bit difficult because that mental piece, right? But you have control over that. A lot more kids are willing to do that because they know how to do that. The tactical, that's really in your training environment. I think the challenge is how do you develop this mental piece? So that's one of the, that, that's one of the big purposes we're offering this, these sessions once every other month is to help you build that, that pillar to help you progress because this also does not, is not just for you in soccer. It's for you beyond soccer. So again, hopefully you took something away. I want to open it up to what I haven't done before, and I apologize for this, but Q&A. Any questions pertaining to this topic or other topics we've covered from a mental, mental standpoint? Anything from pressure? Last session, it was building a champion's mindset. Yep. What do you get when you're under pressure? What does who get when you're under pressure? What do I get? Yeah. Depends what environment I'm in. You think about uh, public speaking. I shared this with, with uh, you boys and girls last time. This was not a place that I aspired to be in when I was your age, I can promise you that. So if you would ask me that question six months ago, I'd say a lot of nerves and scared a little bit. In soccer, you put me in front of the goal and a PK or free kick, like, get me there. I'll be, I'll be the one, I wanna be in that position. So it's an interesting one. Because I think there again, we can look at two different scenarios and you might be the opposite. You might say, I like talking in front of people, but I don't want to take a PK, but that's me. So good question, fair question. I like it. Anybody else? Nothing, deal. Well, thank you for the time. I don't want to keep you longer than necessary. Um, I will see you boys and girls in two months. <laughs>